So uh, let me fire up Final Cut Pro here, which I already got it fired up. I just need to uh, go over to my space that it's in. And I have this skateboarder clip in my canvas in the timeline here, as you can see. Just him going up and coming down. And this would be a good clip to use for time remapping. So first thing we want to do is I'm going to get, I have no audio. It had audio, but I went ahead and got rid of it. I'm going to hit Shift Z and that will fit my clip to the timeline. Okay, now everything is normal. Of course, you can double click your clip, load it into the timeline, I mean into the viewer. Click your motion tab and at the very bottom there's a time remap. And you can go in here and use it this way if you like. Here's your time remap graph and all this, but I don't like it like this. Um, I like to do it inside the timeline. Sometimes I'll have to come up here and do a few little tweaks. Um, such as velocity and, and stuff like that but for the most part I'm not big keen on doing time remapping here in the viewer I like to do it in the timeline so let's set this up and get it ready to do time remapping in the timeline so the first thing we want to do is go down here and click this green and blue button with the two bars it's the toggle clip keyframes button and when I do this you'll see this little space opens up below our track with these little notches going along here if I push that button again it closes it as you can see it just opens up a little extra space here below the track track 2 is above it just like normal okay we don't have any audio so I'm gonna pull my audio down here out of the way so I don't have to fool with it and see it now I need to adjust the height of this um, key where I'm gonna be working in this little gray box here so there's a little bitty bar here to the left if you mouse over it, you'll get this uh, resize icon. And you click and drag it, you can see that little gray bar going up and down. This resizes this block underneath your clip. As you can see, I can get it really big. Now it's really big. Okay, now i got this big, huge block here. So let me hit Shift-Z. And this fits it to the timeline. I can make my time a clip bigger if I choose to. So now we're set up to do some work in the timeline here on my one clip. I have my one clip singled out. I hit Shift Z to fit that one clip to the timeline so I can see exactly what I'm doing. I hit my uh, toggle clip keyframe button and I opened up this to make it a little bigger so I can see my whole area. Okay, so now how do we get into this time remapping thing? Well, let's start with the basics. Go over to your slip and slide tool and click and hold. There'll be three options, the slip slide and this time remap. Select your time remap, it's a stopwatch or you can hit SSS on the keyboard. Now when you do this, and you mouse over your clip, you'll see a little stopwatch with a line, kind of like the razor blade tool. I'm gonna go back to the middle of the clip somewhere, and click, bam, and when I click, you can see it puts this blue line up here, and also, it's set a keyframe right here, and it's got a keyframe right here at the beginning, okay? So now, if I take my time remapping icon and snap it to that keyframe, and click and hold, a little tooltip box will come up. Now it'll say speed left and speed right. It's going to tell you what the speed is to the left and to the right of this icon that we click, this line right here. And if I click and drag left, you'll see the speed to the left is minus a thousand percent and the speed to the right is 113 percent. So um, anything to the left of this keyframe is going to be slow. And then as soon as it gets past this keyframe, it's going to be fast. And I can drag it back this way. I can make it slow before the keyframe and fast after the keyframe. Or I can make it fast before the keyframe and slow after the keyframe. As you can see, when I do this, these little boxes down here get wider and smaller. The closer they are together, the faster the clip's going to be. The further they are apart, the slower it's going to be. If anything turns red, that means the clip is running in reverse. Okay? So that's just basic keyframe control. You really can't do anything with it um, besides those basic controls. You can speed it up before the keyframe and speed it up after the keyframe. And you can set more than one keyframe. I can set another keyframe here if I wanted to. Click and drag. And this will adjust my speed from between here and here. You see? So let's remove all that and uh, that was your basic stopwatch time remapping tool remember select it click a spot in the timeline click and drag watch your tooltip now as you can see the speed to the left is 88 percent and the speed to the right is 112 percent so it's slower 
before this keyframe and faster after the keyframe. So let's slow it down to about 50% on the left. So you can see, and it's 150% on the right. So before this keyframe, you can see how far apart these lines are spaced and how close they're spaced on this side of the keyframe. So before the keyframe, it's going to be slow. You can see the slow motion. Here he comes, slow. But when it hits this keyframe, it speeds way up. Bam. You see? So that's the basic of time remapping. But let's, what if you want to get a little more accurate? And as you can see, when I've done this, it also laid some keyframes in my time remap in my motion tab of my viewer. What you want to do is, to get more precise control, is right click in anywhere in this box, and it'll give you all kinds of parameters. Scroll down to time remap, time graph. And when you do this, this time graph will show up. Now this is our speed. As of right now, it's pretty much normal speed, the whole clip. As you can see, it's a solid slant all the way up. But say we want to slow him down right when he goes into the air. You know, like say right there, we want it to start slowing down. So what I'm going to do is hold my Option key, mouse over this graph line, and click, and it'll put a keyframe right there. Okay? So now let's mouse on up in the keyframe here to where we want where he starts um, about right the keyframe we've already set looks good so we'll have him go to slow motion all the way up to about right here and then we'll have him take back off in normal okay so how do we make him slow between this keyframe and this keyframe well just grab your keyframe and pull it down as you can see the slant ain't quite as steep and the less slant there is to the slope the slower it's going to be if I took it and bring it way up and then made the slant real steep it's going to be real fast so let's make this slant real slow. So I'm slowing down quite a bit here. And we're going to select this end keyframe. Or hold an option key and hit an end key and create an end keyframe. And I want to even it out, you know, because I want it to be slow the whole clip. I don't want it to speed up after this keyframe here. I want it to be steady. Okay. So now let's play this back and see what happens. Here he comes, he'll hit there, and he slows down, as you can see. Because as soon as this keyframe, he gets to this keyframe, it's gonna start sloping down when it's gonna start slowing down. Let me show you that again. I'll bring my canvas out here to the center so you can see, maybe open it up a little bit. Okay. Now you can see when I play, He'll get to when he's right here. And it slows down the rest of the clip. Now, what if I wanted it to right there slow down? And when it gets right here, I want it to speed back up. Well, that's no problem either. I'm going to hold the Option key. Create another keyframe right there. Okay? Because that's where I want him to start speeding up again. So I'm going to go forward a little bit and create another keyframe like that. And I'm going to slant this up where he, he will speed back up. Now, if I didn't adjust this last keyframe, he would speed up and slow back down, you know? So we want to adjust this last one, too, to kind of make it an even tilt. We don't want him to speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down, which you could do that if you made, like, W out of the graph, up, down, up, down, you know? So now he should be slow coming through here, and when he gets right here, he'll speed back up. You notice that? So here he comes, slow and you back to normal okay but say for instance we want to do one more thing what if instead of speeding back up you want him to have a freeze frame then speed back up well that's okay too take this keyframe here or make a keyframe and drag it down to this line is completely straight now this straight line means it's gonna hold a key a solid frame right there a steel frame and then when it gets here it'll take back off so if I play it it slows down holds takes back off we can stretch these keyframes out and make the hold a little bit longer. Okay? Let's go back to the beginning. Play it. Here he comes. Slow. Freeze. Back to normal. You see? It's that simple, guys. The possibilities are limitless. And time remapping isn't the only thing you can do within the timeline right here on this show clip keyframes box. As you notice, when you right-clicked, you had more options than in Time Graph. You had Motion Blur, Drop Shadow, um, and under the under these 
menus, there's submenus like under drop shadow, there's opacity, there's softness, there's angle, under this there's crop, left, right, top, bottom, edge feather. So let me select edge feather. When I do this, you'll see this little blue line comes up, which represents my edge feather. If I drag this blue line up, way up, you can see that my edge feather has come into play now. Can you see that? But what if you want your edge feather? What if you want to build your edge feather over time? Okay, well, do the same thing. Option click, set a keyframe. Option click, set another keyframe somewhere like that. And then bring your edge feather up, way up, like that. Now, when it gets to this point, you can see there's no edge feather around through here. When it gets to this point, it's going to start growing an edge feather. See? There. There it came. You see that? If I wanted to, I could go in here and option click and put another keyframe and have it come back down. Option click here, put another keyframe, have it come back up. So now my edge feather is going to come in, go out, come in, go out. As you can see when I scroll through here, here comes my edge feather. There goes my edge feather. And here it comes back again. Let me play that. You see what I'm, what I'm talking about here? If I wanted to, I could go out the duration of the clip like that. Up. Oh. Let's set one last one here. And by the way, if you set a keyframe and you don't like where you've got it, just option click it again and it disappears. So now we have this set. Watch my edge feather when I play it. It'll go in, out, in, out. See? In, out, in, out, in, out. And you can do this with anything besides speed, edge feathers, crops, basic motion, scale, rotation, distort, aspect ratio, opacity, drop shadows, angles, motion blurs. And you can add motion blur. Say I wanted to add some motion blur when he gets into the air right here. I'll option click a keyframe right there at this spot. Drag it up, and this will increase my motion blur big time. Okay? And it keeps holds on to the motion blur. And then when I, he comes to maybe right there, he freezes and he comes on down. Right there, you, you want your motion blur to kind of back off. So we'll set a keyframe at the end and drag it down, and the motion blur will be gone. And it's the same thing with. With this try, I don't know, basic motion scale. Okay? If I bring this line up, you see my clip scales way up. Okay, if I put a few, option click a few key, keyframes through here. Okay? I'm going to bring this keyframe up. Bring this one down. I'll bring this one up. Now it should scale up and scale down. Scale up. Scale down, scale up, scale down. You know, see, it's not only it's doing all this stuff, it's doing the edge feather and the time remapping and everything, and it's all being controlled from right within my timeline. And when I'm done, I just close my clip keyframes button, my toggle clip keyframes button, and I'm good to go. It saves me from having to open up my viewer, go to my motion tab. As you can see, this is a little bit more intimidating and confusing which is a good way to watch your work and go back over and look at your work and be more precise and you can see all the keyframes that are laid out in everything that you've done. We've laid out keyframes in scale. You can see right here up and down. We've laid out keyframes in crop. We've With uh, the uh, edge feather, you can see up and down, up and down. Motion blur, we've added our motion blur keyframes and we've added our time remap here. And you can see all this was took care of from doing it right here in the timeline. That's what I'm talking about, guys. If you have any questions, please get a hold of me. I'll be more than happy to answer them if I can. This is Eric for Final Cut Studio School saying thank you, and we'll see you next time.